classroom to the other one and so on. So everything is here, right? True, true. Because I had only, <coughs> I had only 10 minutes between my first two classes. I have three calculus until 11, I, 11, 10, I have calculus too. We're actually starting chapter five today. You guys know that uh, next week is spring break, right? Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. You guys don't know? <laughs> Honestly, the last few days have been like a blur to me, so I kind of just let everything go. Yeah. It's like so long. It's, it's like, it's only like one week or so. It's like, it takes forever. Oh yeah, we're gonna have like nothing to do then. <laughs> if you have nothing to do, you can, uh, you can watch my other classes. <laughs> If you need a show to watch and you like sci-fi, you should watch Altered Carbon if you haven't watched it already. It's on Netflix. What, what show is it? Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon. Okay. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I actually <clears throat> have been keeping myself busy um, doing lectures and, I mean, preparing lectures and tests. And I have to do my... Also, I have to do text, right? But now they defer it, which is good. But I still need to do it at some point. Okay, so why don't we start? I can wear this and I can wear this. Uh, maybe I use another color. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go and get another marker because this one is not good anymore. Okay, hold on. Does anyone have ideas on what to do for spring break? <laughs> stay inside. <laughs> yeah, you should stay inside even. Everybody should stay inside. I don't like doing things inside. I don't know. <laughs> go, for, go for a walk. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, six, feet, six feet apart though, other, uh, unless it's family member. Unless it's the same household. Okay, um, so you guys understand what it means, standard matrix for T? Do you guys understand what it means? The terminology? Yeah. We have gone through this many times, that means. Well, can you tell me? Okay. That means Tx is equal to A times X. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, so if so set u equal to this guy 
minus one one. What will be what will be t of u? How do I do this? T of u will be this matrix times minus one one. And what do we get? Uh, we get uh, minus five. <laughs> Is that right? Okay, so over here, if you look at the picture, if your original vector is minus one, one, this one is u. So TU will be minus five, minus one. Okay. DB is equal to two one. What happens if I want to find this? Okay, so what do we get? Can you guys help me? <laughs> six, six minus two. What's the first entry? Four. Second entry? Two, right? So if you grab it, So the original vector V is two, one. The new vector under the, under the transformation, this guy becomes this same direction. Okay? Same direction. <laughs> so this guy has a property this particular V has a property that A times V is equal to two V. So A times V is just that, uh, it's just lengthening the vector, okay? So in that direction, in that direction, the, <coughs> the linear transformation represented by A just actually lengthen the vector by a factor of two, okay? And in this case, it's number two here, it's called the eigenvalue. And this guy B here is called the eigenvector. Okay? So this is an example to demonstrate to you what's an eigenvalue and eigenvector. Of course, I need to give you a formal definition. Uh, any question about this example? Yes, no, okay. You're welcome to share your video if you want, okay? Any question about this example? <coughs> so I'm going to talk about the definition. Okay, uh, D 
this letter lambda, this is lambda. It's one of the grid letters, okay? One of the grid letters, A, B, C, D, E, uh, grid letters, sorry, alpha, beta, gamma, one of them is lambda. So A, X equal to lambda, X, <coughs> okay? It's a non-zero vector though, okay? Because if, if this guy is zero, of course, A times zero is equal to lambda times zero, okay, all the time. So it has to be a non-zero vector. Uh, can I keep moving or do you guys have a question about the definition? <clears throat> I'm going to just keep moving, okay? And you have questions, just ask. I mean, we are just really dealing with mostly definition for now. Uh, do you guys remember we did this last time? Do you know, remember what is a stochastic matrix where all the columns add up to one? For example, uh, something like this. Uh, let's say P is equal to 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0.7. I think we have something very similar to this. Okay, last time. Did we do this exact? Uh, matrix last time. Oh, last time we did this other one. Uh, on nine five, on zero five. And then from zero three on nine seven. You guys remember this last time? And we solved for the stationary distribution. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And we end up with we end up with Q equal to uh, We end up with Q equal to three over eight and five over eight. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, is, the, is there the background noise uh, bothering you guys? Are you guys hearing background noise from my from my side? Yeah, no. I, can hear, I can hear a little bit. Is it bothering you? A little bit. I don't hear anything. I can ask them to lower their voice. No, no, it's okay. It's Fine. okay. Is it okay? Yeah, or at least I think so. Okay. All right. So in this particular example here, we did this last time. So this is a matrix. Okay. So one is the eigenvalue. for the eigenvector three over eight, five over eight, okay? Now the eigenvector, you don't have to call this the eigenvector because in this example, 
uh, p times three five is also equal to three five. Okay, because you're just scaling it. So one is also the eigenvalue for the eigenvalue. Okay, so because you scale this, you multiply, multiply by this equal to itself. If you scale it, it's still equal to itself. So the entire line actually, anything on this line, uh, three, five, anything on this line. Okay, this direction is three, five. Anything on this line is going to be an eigenvector. So we have the terminology of the eigenspace, okay? So the eigenspace of P, for this example, okay? Eigenspace of P uh, corresponding to the eigenvector one is the span of this one, okay? Do you uh, have any, I'm just introducing a lot of terminology to you, okay? So this is actually called E1. It's the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equal to one, okay? Any other question? We can before I just keep moving on. But after a while, you'll get really used to this terminology. Don't worry about it too much. Okay. Can I can I keep moving? Is it okay to lower a little bit? Yeah, sorry about that. I know I'm really allowed to, sorry. Okay, so uh, let's ask this question. Okay, so how do we how do we answer this question? How do we answer this question? Uh, you these two vectors eigenvector of a. So all we need to do is to just multiply a by u and see whether this is a scale multiple of u. Okay, so we are going to just do this. Did you mean a scale scale multiple of v, v or u? U, a times u. This is two separate problems. One is is u an eigenvector of a, and then the next problem is that is v an eigenvector of a. Okay, they don't interact. These two guys. Is it okay, Anna? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a u equal to lambda u. Uh, what do we get? A 
Is it negative 24? <coughs> And positive 20. Is this one the scale multiple of that one? Yes or no? No. Oh, oh, it's four. <laughs> Negative four. Negative four. That's very good. So this the answer yes or no for you? Yes. The icon value is what? What's the corresponding icon value in this case? What's the corresponding eigenvalue? Negative four. Negative four. Mm. Mm. How about the other one? Is that right? Is this a scale multiple of that? No. Okay. Okay. I think we, you guys got it, I hope. Uh, can I erase this part? Can I erase this problem? Uh, will you give me another minute? Okay, I'm gonna just write it. <laughs> Okay, here we are actually talking about the same matrix and we want to show that seven is an eigenvalue. Okay, they already give you the eigenvalue. They are not asking you to find it. These problems are now slightly easier than later problems. Seven is an eigenvalue of eight. That means, okay, that means you need to show, you need to show that A times X equal to seven X <coughs> has non-trivial solution because you have a non-zero vector to satisfy this, okay? Okay. We want to show that this guy has non-trivial solution. How do we do that? How do I show that this one has non-trivial solution? So I have to do this um, one six five two x one x two <laughs> equal to seven x one. 7x2. Uh, can you guys see that I can think of this as 1652 x1x2 equal to 7700x1x2. 
this is one way to think about it. And then I subtract both sides. Then I have one minus seven, six minus zero, five minus zero, two minus seven, x one, x two, equal to zero, zero. And then I do this augmented matrix. Minus six, six, five, minus five, zero, zero. Okay. So to, for this to system to have non-zero solution, that means <coughs> uh, I do R E F of A, and then I get one minus one zero zero. It's okay. Is there a free variable there? Are you guys following me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so. So that this one has non-trivial solution. Uh, maybe I change this a little bit and find corresponding eigenvector. Now, if I want to find the corresponding eigenvector, <coughs> I have to find the solution set of this. Okay, so that's three variable here. So x2 is equal to x2, x1 is equal to, what's x1? x2. x2, so x will be x2 times 1, 1. So you can, <coughs> you can choose any value of x2, <coughs> except x2 equal to 0, okay? So eigenvector, <coughs> so one one is eigenvector for lambda equal to seven. Okay. Another way to say this is that another way to say that E seven. This is an eigenspace. for lambda equal to seven is equal to, lambda space is like the entire subspace spanned by the eigenvectors. The entire line in this case is the span of one one. Is it okay? Are we, all, are we good? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can I erase? Anna? Go ahead, I'm taking, uh, is it too late? No, I, uh, I'm taking photos. Okay. Can I erase the top? Yes. Let's get a sense of the definition already. <laughs> Okay, so what do we do? Lambda equal to two. Okay. What I need to do is to, uh, what's A? I forgot to tell you what A is. Okay. 
So we are going to consider a minus lambda i equal to zero. <coughs> Just right here. Here, this guy is a minus lambda i. It's okay. We basically need to solve this. So a minus lambda i will be what is lambda lambda equal to two. So this will be you subtract two here, subtract two here. So you have one 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 zero zero. Uh, I'm kind of skipping <coughs> some steps. Do you guys follow? I'm interested in this guy. Okay, I'm actually trying to find null space of a minus lambda i. Just like here, okay? You're solving this, right? You're solving a x equal to seven x, where seven is lambda. So it's a minus lambda i equal to zero, you solve it. So you have a, the lambda equal to two, you subtract two from the diagonal entries. Is it okay or not? Let me know if it is not. It's okay. Oh, it's okay, right? <coughs> so this guy to the RL here, yeah, the two lines are the same. So the eigenvector, this is x1, x2. So we have x2 equal to x2, x1 equal to negative x2. <coughs> so eigenvector will be What's eigenvector? By looking at this. Negative one, one. Is it okay? So eigenspace E2 is going to be span of minus one. <coughs> How about lambda u equal to four? <coughs> Uh, so why, why do you have yeah. a second note? So you have the eigenvector and then why do you have to show the span? Oh, I'm just introducing another that terminology for eigenspace. So maybe I write down the definition of eigenspace down here, formally. Uh, okay. so will it always be the same? Uh, yeah, it's the span of the it's the span of the eigenvector. Okay. Do you do I need to formally write down the the um the okay I'll write that anyway. Okay. So this is summarizing a little bit. We will finish that one later, okay? Because Anna is asking. Okay, so this is just a terminology here. 
because we need to use this terminology later to talk about things to make it easier. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so how about lambda equal to four? Lambda equal to four, what does the matrix look like now? Just momentum matrix. I'm trying to solve for it. So three, one, one, three, you have a subtract four. Can you see that is this? Yes or no? Take this matrix, subtract four. Yes. Basically, A minus I have I. So this guy become one minus one, zero, 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 zero. So, eigenvector is going to be one in this case. The eigenvector will be one, one. It's one, one, right? Yeah. Can you guys see that? X2 equal to X2, X1 equal to X2. So E for span of. Uh, so basically, what happened for this guy is uh, this matrix as a transformation. This matrix as a transformation. This is transformation T, Tx equal to Ax. What does it do? What does it do to this unit circle? So what it does is that <coughs> In the direction one one, in this direction one one, it's going to scale it by a factor of four. Okay. <coughs> in this direction, which is direction one one, it's going to get scaled by a factor of four. So, for example, this guy, if this is unit circle, this point is one zero, it's going to go to four zero. Sorry, it's not one zero. I mean one one. One one is going to go to four four. <coughs> it's okay. In this other direction, lambda equal to two minus one one. This other direction, let's say this point is minus one one. It's going to scale to scale by two. Okay, so it's going to go to here minus two two. So this whole circle is actually going to become, um, maybe I draw it better. Four, four is there, two, two, maybe some. Uh, it's not to scale. Let's say minus two, two is here. Let's say four, four is there. So it will be some kind of the ellipse. Is it okay? <laughs> so this unit circle here. <laughs> we could become this in this. Okay, I didn't draw it really well. <laughs> this is so geometrically what happened. Okay. Are we okay? I'm going to keep moving. Uh, how do I verify that this guy is an eigenvalue? Can you guys suggest me what to do?
Uh, any suggestion, guys? Pull out. Also, I do. We're gonna just solve a a x equal to two x, right? So essentially, we will essentially solve this, right? You basically find the null space. So this is what we end up doing. Wow, I have all this marker dust on my floor. I didn't even notice. It's not good. Okay, so we basically need to solve a minus two i x equal to zero. Okay. So we basically take this matrix, take that matrix, and I need to subtract two, subtract two everywhere here. You guys know what I'm talking about? Subtract two. When I subtract two, I have two minus one, six. Subtract two, two minus one, six. Subtract two, two minus one, six. Are you guys following me? Subtract two from all the diagonals, from diagonal entries. Yes? Yes. So what is the RREF of this guy? Will be one minus one and a half, three, zero, and a bunch of zeros because the other lines are the same. Okay. How many free variables are there? Two. There are two. So x2 equal to x2, x3 equal to x3, x1 equal to one half x2 minus the x3. Is it okay? Yes. So eigenvectors. <coughs> I can, okay, let me just write it down here. X is equal to x2 one half one zero plus x3 minus three. Zero, one. Are you guys with me? <coughs> the quality just dropped. I can't read the board. Yeah, I can't. I can't read it either. Yeah, professor, yeah. something happened with your internet. Something happened with my internet. Yeah. Okay, not good. Yeah, the screen quality just dropped a lot. Suddenly. Professor, are you on Mac or Windows? On Mac. Okay. Maybe so I so I restart it. Maybe. Yeah, I heard that I mean it's too many people are doing this at home now. No, it's it's nice. specifically it's your network bandwidth. If you're going to try oh and now it's bigger again, so it's better. So what should I do? If your kids streaming Netflix, you gotta you gotta kick them off. It's, it's that simple. <laughs> yeah. So my my quality of uh, service draw. I don't know. It's not that better. It actually came back to normal, professor. If you can hear us from there. Uh, drop. I'm not saying that you might. <laughs> it's clear again. It's better now. <laughs> That's fine. It's very little. I mean, they say that you're streaming Netflix, then maybe. But you're not streaming Netflix. No, we're not watching. You're not doing Netflix yet. Okay. It's better now. It's, it's better, better now. now. 
it's it, it went back to normal, Professor. You're good. Okay. Sorry. Maybe I'm not apparently. I mean, I was just I just went over to check. I don't think Netflix is on. <laughs> Okay. All right. So where are we? So the eigenvectors. Both of these are eigenvectors. Okay. Uh, I don't even if I don't like the fraction. I can do one two zero. <coughs> so this one corresponds to this one. You guys understand why? Because this is just a parameter, right? It does not really matter. Yes. Right. The you other one. Multiplied by two. I just multiply all the entries by two. <coughs> this one is an eigenvector. If I scale it, it's still an eigenvector. Okay. Yes. No, Anna, you have a question? No, I'm good. I understand. Okay, good. So the eigenspace for lambda equal to two as <coughs> both of this. So in this case, the dimension of the eigenspace is equal to two. It has two linearly independent vectors there. Okay. So this just illustrate to you. The eigenspace doesn't have to be the span of only one vector. It can be more than one vector. Okay. So any anything on this plane, anything on this plane, let's say this is called, one of them is called V1. And the other one is V2. Uh, so if you draw it, so you have V1 and V2. Maybe V1 is like this. I mean, it's not really drawn nicely, okay? Maybe V2 is somewhere like this. Then the entire plane, entire plane which contain V1 and V2, this entire plane is the eigenspace. Any linear combination of V1, V2 is also an eigenvector, okay? Let's say you have something like this, something like this here. V1 plus V2 is also an eigenvector. Any linear combination of these two guys is going to be an eigenvector because the entire span, the span of this whole thing will satisfy it's the null space. The null space is two dimensional. Is it all right? Yep. Uh, we still okay, hopefully. Uh, this condition I already talked about, okay? Uh, this one has non trivial solution means that this guy, okay, is not invertible. Uh, we talked about this <coughs> in earlier section. Are you guys able to follow this? 
if this guy is invertible, if this guy is invertible, then you can multiply by the inverse and the only solution will be x equal to zero. Okay. And this also means that this guy is not invertible, means that the determinant Okay, so it's this condition that we are looking for now. This is kind of a important, somewhat important condition for lambda to be eigenvalue. How are we doing up to here? We're introducing a lot of terminology. Okay, so in this case, we have a matrix, okay, which is lower diagonal matrix, uh, sorry, upper diagonal matrix is a bunch of zeros down here. Okay, so to find the eigenvalue, in this case, it's not that difficult because all you need to do is to solve determinant A minus lambda I equal to zero. What's A minus lambda I? A minus lambda i is three minus lambda is zero minus lambda six zero zero two minus lambda is equal to zero. So what is the determinant of this guy? The determinant of this guy is going to be just three minus lambda minus lambda two minus lambda equal to zero. So do we know? Can we solve this? Lambda equal to three, zero, or two. It's okay. Uh, so what do we notice here? We notice that <coughs> for a triangular matrix, Uh, eigenvalue uh, B diagonal entries it's okay Are those, are the diagonal entries all the eigenvalues for that matrix? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because of this condition that I showed earlier, the determinant has to be equal to zero. Okay. If the determinant is not equal to zero, then the matrix is in A minus lambda I is invertible. Then when you solve this equation, when you solve this equation, you can multiply by the inverse on both sides and you force the solution to be zero. That means there are no other non-trivial, no non-trivial solutions. Okay? So that is why the diagonal entries are the eigenvalues. So what would this, what would this answer be? Eigenvalues are going to be one four six. 
Yeah. One, four, six. Okay. Is it okay? So how about this? Eigenvalues are going to be What is this eigenvalue? <coughs> one, six, or one six, I guess. It's one, one, and six. It's one and six, right? Do you have to write the 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 one twice or not? Uh, yes. There are two ways to write it. One is right as one one six. The other way to write it. The other way to write it is write it as one with algebraic multiplicity. Two. Uh, this is algebraic. Sorry, this is right. Okay. One with. Algebraic multiplicity two six. Uh, you don't have to say it if it is multiplicity one, but you can say it more explicit. Okay. Is it all right? How about this? So what are the eigenvalues? Two, two, and two. Okay. Eigenvalues. Oh, maybe I just write lambda, okay? I don't have to write lambda every single time. Lambda equal to two, two, two. Or lambda equal to two with algebraic. Multiplicity. What's the algebraic multiplicity here? How many times does it occur? Three. It's okay. So I introduce the concept of algebraic multiplicity here. How are we doing up to here? Good. Good. Now I need to, uh, a couple more things I need to mention here. So say lambda. So I need to introduce the concept of geometric multiplicity. Okay. Uh, geometric multiplicity is the dimension. So lambda is an eigenvalue. Eigenvalue. The dimension of the null space of a minus lambda i. That means when you solve for when you solve for a minus lambda i equal to zero, you get this. You remember <coughs> the earlier example. We get two linearly independent vectors. You remember that example. In that case. Uh, the geometric multiplicity is two in that case. So this guy is equal to geometric multiplicity. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Do you understand the definition of geometric multiplicity? Is it too many symbols here? The dimension of the null space of A minus lambda I. That means, so this is essentially the same as number of free variables. When with when solving a minus lambda i x equal to zero, okay? Because the number of free variable will be the dimension of this guy. So the example that we did earlier uh, with <coughs> uh, one of these examples we did earlier is the letter. I forgot what that was, was E of, the one we just did, where I drew the ellipse, right? I did, uh, no, it's not that one. There was another one, another one where, where I did, the one with the three by three matrix. I have E2, these vectors, this is the earlier example. This is the one I erased earlier. So in this case, okay, geometric, so the dimension of E2 is what? What's the dimension of E2? There are two vectors here. Okay, so the geometric multiplicity equal to two. Uh, we will encounter this a little bit more later, okay? So, do you understand the difference between algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity? Yeah, but like, I'm confused how they're like related, I guess. Because how so you say algebraic multiplicity is just like the number of times it shows up when you're solving for lambda. Yes. But that's like, does that have to do with any uh, dimension thing? Yeah, there's a there's a result which I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> okay, but I just want to make sure everybody understand the definition. Algebraic multiplicity is a number of times they occur when you solve for lambda, okay? Geometric multiplicity is the dimension of the corresponding null space of A minus lambda i. The result that you need to know, okay? The result that you need to know for eigen value lambda, okay? A certain eigenvalue, a fixed eigenvalue. Geometric multiplicity is always less than or equal to algebraic multiplicity. Okay? Okay, this is how they are related. And it can be equal. Okay, when they are equal, then it has significance. Okay, so let's just take a look at these three examples. Okay, let's just take a look at this example. Okay, this one for lambda equal to one. Okay, uh, algebraic multiplicity. Is equal to two. So geometric multiplicity. Yeah, it can be either one or two. We don't know until you actually do it. Find it out. Is it okay? How, how do you know it's either one or two? Uh, it's uh, from that theorem. On this theorem here. 
which I'm not going to be able to prove. It's very long to prove. <laughs> so the algebraic multiplicity, okay. Maybe I add this geometric multiplicity is always bigger than zero, okay? So geometric multiplicity is always bigger than zero and less than or equal to algebraic multiplicity. Is it okay? And the, the, this part is not bad, bigger than zero because that's the definition of eigenvalue, right? Because you are going to get a free variable, but you just don't know how many you get, okay? Because you do, if you don't get a free variable, that means the only solution is a triple solution. So you are going to get a free variable, Okay. Is it okay? So what are the possibility here for this case? This is for lambda equal to two. Algebraic multiplicity. It's gonna be equal to what? Three? So what are the possible geometric multiplicity? It can be one or two or three. And we don't know until we actually do it. Actually do it means that actually solving it. Solving A minus lambda I equal to zero. <laughs> uh, even though you're, we're, we're not gonna prove the theorem, is there like a logic as to why that is? Is there a logic why that is? Or like kind of like a reason or? Yeah, we have some reason. Uh, I can give you some more intuition as time goes on. Is it okay? But I have to introduce all this other stuff. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Okay. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some intuition, okay? All right. Uh, but I, I have to I have to have all these other stuff fit together first. Okay. Uh, how much time we have? I don't have too much time. You you will see the significance even as time goes on, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, let me uh, see whether you understand what this is saying. So it's saying that if you have two different eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues, so this lambda one and lambda two are not the same. That means it's this thing. That means this thing means lambda one is not equal to lambda two. That's what this thing means. Okay, <laughs> then these two vectors, cannot be scale multiple of each other. They are linearly independent. 
Uh, the proof is actually not difficult to prove, but um, if you get the intuition, I'm not going to prove it to save some time. Uh, if you want me to, if you want me to prove it, I can prove it. It's up to you guys. You have any patterns? No? Then I am going to, uh, I am going to just, um, Wait, could you prove it? Oh, you want me to prove it? Okay. The proof is not really too hard. Okay, here's the proof. Now we want to show that these are linear independent. So if we suppose this is equal to zero, so we eventually put the goal is to, the goal is to, here's the goal. The goal is to show that, <coughs> C1 equal to zero and C2 equal to zero. Do you agree that this is the goal? At least this is one way to prove it. That means the only way to make the linear combination equal to zero is the trivial linear combination. That's the definition of linear independence. Are we okay with it? Yeah. Okay, let's see what happened then, okay? So we start out with this guy. Now remember the goal is to show that C1, C2 equal to zero. Okay. Now what does this mean? This means that A times C1 V1 plus C2 V2 is equal to zero because I'm just, because this is A multiplied by zero, right? Now this one is C1, A times V1. A times V1 is lambda one V1 plus C2, A times V2, lambda two V2 equal to zero. Okay. If you look at this one first equation, this is equation one. Take the equation one and multiply it by, uh, take this guy, multiply it by, let's say, lambda one. Now take this guy, multiply by lambda one. I have C1 lambda one V1 plus C2 lambda one V2 equal to zero. Okay. So now this is called equation two. This is called equation three. If you look at those two equations, can you see these two are the same? That's the whole point of multiplying this guy by lambda one is to match these two terms. Now you have two subtract three. Okay. Two subtract three is going to get you C2 lambda two minus lambda one. Two. Where did the lambdas come from? Uh, those are the eigenvalues. So this means that this, uh, these are the, okay. Basically V1 is the eigenvector for lambda one, V2 is eigenvector uh, for lambda two. That means here means that A V1 equal to lambda one V1, A V2, and we were using this property here. We were using this property when we go from this line to this line. Oh, okay. Okay, so we end up with this. Okay. Now, V2 is some vector. It's a non-zero vector because it's an eigenvector. Eigenvectors are non-zero. So this one implies C2 lambda 2 minus lambda 1 equal to zero which implies C2 equal to zero because, because what? Because lambda two and lambda one are the same. Okay, so I show that C2 equal to zero. So you can show it similarly that C1 equal to zero. Okay, once you show that C2 is equal to zero, you can, 
in similar manner, you can show C1 equal to zero. So instead of eliminating this term, you can eliminate the other term. Okay, so we just do similar. I mean, it's exactly the same argument. <coughs> so I basically prove that. This is a pretty standard type of proof for showing something a linearly independent. So we are really done. Uh, we, we run a little bit of our time, uh, over time, sorry about that. So we are going to, uh, we're going to continue on Wednesday, guys, okay? Sorry for running over by a couple of minutes. See you. Any questions before we sign up? Sign up? No. You guys okay? So we'll just continue. We just have a couple of things to mention on Wednesday, and then we can go to 5.2, okay? Okay, I'll see you guys. Thank you. Bye, Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, bye.